Y'all, who is this clown? Seriously, I never even heard of this dude. And now I know more about him than I ever wanted to know. But I'm going to use this man, who is this couple, Goldie Hawn, Kirk Douglas, their son. No, actually, that's not even his son. It, it, this is her son, her son, and Kate Hudson's si uh, brother. If you don't know who any of those people are, it doesn't matter. That's not the point. The point is this man is trash. <laughs> and he just humiliated his wife, who I had also never heard of until today. And he just make, he just proved so many points that I go over. Let's go into it. Before we do, let me just give you some family tree backstory and just to show a picture of this is the the mother of his children his wife that he just loves so much that he just humiliated for no reason but it's not the first time this is not a deep deep dive this is more of a i only have so much time for research today and this family is too what is in my hair too crazy to go into i don't have the time for it. but just the tip of the iceberg his mother goldie Hawn. I grew up watching this woman, her and Gert, Kurt Douglas, who is not her husband, but her partner for like a long, long time. Which I always thought was kind of cool. I'm like, okay, she's been married. She doesn't want to marry again. She's got plenty of money. You do you, bo boo. They've been together forever. Uh, but you know what I remember them from? This little story about a hobo schedule who coerces a rich lady into sleeping with him, falling in love with him, raising all of his little shad kids. Because she was mean to him. Now, I always usually uh, side on the the worker versus the millionaire billionaire always. But this lady's husband sucked. But she, he, he took it out on her. You know, I'm going to do a whole deep dive. Let me know if you want that because this movie, I can't believe as a kid, I was like, what a great love story. <laughs> now I'm like, this is terrifying. Yet again, they normalize Beauty and the Beast. Dating down, settling, Judd Apatosh energy of like beautiful girl and the dork who doesn't deserve her and kind of hates women anyway. Um, and it, this has been going on. <coughs> I, 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 you, every movie is Beauty and the Beast repackaged. Some jerk. Although at least Beauty and the Beast, at least the Beast had money. It's literally always a woman settling. It's always a woman settling, I swear to God. And then we wonder, why do we end up with these men who hate us? How does this happen? Literally every movie and TV show is this. For my old childhood, at least, this is one reason why I do this work is because once I start realizing this is the message I've gotten in everything I've watched since I was a child, is that I'll be lucky if I have a man, even though the man doesn't deserve me. So I should settle for a man because no man, even a hobo, is, or, uh, even even a hobo is better than no man even though they just make your life harder and they coerce you and they grape you and they take your money and blah 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 but okay yeah 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 just settle and just just going into Goldie Hawn's history just a teeny tiny bit she's definitely you know keeping the Nepo baby energy alive look her dad is a descendant of the youngest signer of the Declaration of Independence <laughs> Another interesting thing. Oh, you look so bored back there. I know. It's the same old story every time. What I'm gathering is that Goldie Hawn cannot be single. She may not want to be married, but she doesn't want to not be with a man. I, maybe she's someone who should watch my channel and learn how to date herself. Just for a little bit. I don't know. Whatever. She'll never watch my channel. <laughs> she got married in 1969 and then, uh, yeah, th till 1976. <laughs> 1976 to 1982. Uh, and then immediately with Kurt Russell to the present. Somewhere between her deciding that they're going to get divorced to actually divorcing and, and, and hooking up with Kurt, okay, which happened, pre that she also dated some uh, French actor and a Moroccan businessman. How does she have the time for all this and raise kids? And she was separated from Kurt <laughs> Russell. Whenever, but then she still, she dated dudes even in separation. So I get, there's a lot of women, there's a lot of men, there's a lot of people who like can't be alone. Uh, and I think they do a disservice to everybody. But having said all that, I still like, I, I still, I still love her. I don't know. Maybe she's done some crazy stuff I haven't heard of yet. I haven't, again, I didn't deep dive into this. Um, but I associate her with like fun childhood movies. I don't know. And 
until I read about her son today, I had no reason to think otherwise. But now I'm starting to question you, Goldie. Were you a toxic boy, Mom? I have questions. So Oliver Hudson, her son, has a podcast now. I literally never heard of this dude. I guess he's been in stuff. Nothing I've ever seen. But anyway, he's on a podcast with his sister. And then he's been oversharing. Today he shared, or maybe whatever, this week, that he cheated on his wife and never got caught. And just in case anyone thought he really loved his wife, uh, you know, just wants you to know that she put up with all this and stayed. Why would you say this? Like this right there makes me think you hate your wife. Why would you tell the world that? Why would you tell, like, I, I feel so bad for this woman now. I mean, I don't, okay, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's, let's read right out of the gate. You didn't regret it. Okay, let's go. So apparently he was not faithful to his now wife um, before their 2006 nuptials. And just so we're clear, does not regret it. It made him a better person. <laughs> not in my eyes, buddy. So he opened up about his complicated period in the relationship with his wife. When I got engaged, something happened psychologically. Just something happened. I don't know what it is. The person he's opened up to is Blake Lively's uh, sister. Y'all know how I feel about her and her husband. Blech. If you haven't seen it yet, the, go watch my playlist. I made too many videos. Anyway, I spiraled and I was unfaithful and I was cheating and I was crazy. Oh, <laughs> that's an ad. Sir. He explained that when he came clean, it was of his own accord. What a good man. What a good man. I never got caught. I told her everything because I couldn't live with myself and get married and be married and have children with this weight. I was crying like, oh my God, who am I? I love this. Like, okay, first of all, I think men, but people, but especially men need to understand some. She deserves to know this, but like your reason for telling her is awful and it's selfish. A lot of men, a lot of people, but men are really bad about this because you know, all the selfishness and entitlement that comes with patriarchy and their conditioning, um, that they just like are gonna center themselves and what's best for them over the other person. And you know, the weight was too heavy for, he didn't tell her because he thought she needed to know. He didn't tell her so that if she could take that information and maybe be like, you know what, fork you, I'm gone. He told her because he knew she wouldn't leave. And he told her because he couldn't, he didn't want to deal with the, the guilt. You know, that should have been yours to bear, brah. So it, it, it's, I don't have a problem with him telling her. I have a problem with him being doing it for all the wrong reason. To get this heavy weight, the cross that he bears off of him. Oh, what a poor guy. It's a, it's a, it's a heavy, heavy weight to carry around that, all that infidelity. Hudson said they were able to move forward because Bartlett is an amazing woman. I don't know. It seems like you're probably going to do it again. And now, uh, she can't leave you because you, she, right? Like she stayed, you know that she won't leave. So why would you not do it again? <laughs> Ads <laughs> that his mother, Goldie Hawn, helped him work, work through the pain. Goldie, are you a psychologist? Are you a therapist? Are you trained at this? Because this seems like a pretty selfish motive of yours. This is, seems like it is borderline enmeshment toxic boy mom. Sounds like you didn't want to lose, I don't know, maybe access to your grandchildren. You didn't want your son to not have what was best for him, regardless of what's best for her. So you saved their marriage. I hate it when parents do this. This was not yours to save. Brother played a big part in it as well. Okay, you sorry said that. Where it's about looking at the entirety and the totality of the relationship, not just the action. Um, see, that's what I, that women. I want women to pay more attention to action and not all this other crap. And also, why are you taking advice from your mom? She literally can't be alone. And he also criticized all her little boyfriends. But we're going to get to that in a minute. Even though it might seem extreme, let's dig in a little bit into. Why? And looking at the whole person rather than this point. <laughs> That's like sh go. Because I'm a good man. There's no doubt. I'm not malicious and all. 
Oh, right, because men who cheat and screw over their wives, it's always because they're malicious and not just selfish and entitled. King babies who want their cake and eat it too. This whole thing, you are not a good man. So this is why I just really want us to get away from the this binary. I mean, binaries in general, because it's usually not, doesn't work out well. And I know I still use language like that. But when we take this too seriously, I'm not a, I, I'm not a bad man. I'm a good man. You know who else says that? Every man who doesn't beat women thinks they're a nice guy, a good guy. Like, you may be a good man because you weren't as awful as your dad or, you know, whatever, but like, nobody is all good or all bad. And wh whoever it is, whether it's like men under patriarchy, white people under white supremacy culture, whatever it is, whatever it is, the, the, like, this idea that there's ever a finish line is nonsense. So, like, being a good man isn't, like, a noun. It's Or that shouldn't be an adjective of, like, this is who you are forever or, and always have been. And it's all relative too. Especially when you hear so many men who are awful fathers are like, I was a good dad. I'm like, what planet are you living on? That's why the whole nice guy thing, nice guy syndrome. Mm -mm. So sorry, bro, you're not a good man. You're not a b inherently bad man, but you really suck as a husband right now because you just did all this. You did all that. And I don't even know what else you've done, but it's not looking good. He said it was just a matter of getting past what he was going through. <laughs> okay. And confess that therapy also played a role. Oh, I just love it. I love it, you know, like cheating. I mean, I don't even know what all he did, but it sounded like he was like cheating a lot during this period of time. And he's just going through something. Let me ask you something. If a woman had done this to him, do you really think he would have been like, yeah, 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 it's cool. Thanks for getting that off your chest. <laughs> Men don't put up with this. Why should we? So they got engaged in 2004 and married two years later at the beach wedding in Cabo. Since, trying to, since tying the knot, they have welcomed three children. Great, you baby trapped her too. Now she really can't leave. Uh, Wilder, Bodie, and Rio. Reflecting on rough period caused by his infidelity. Rough. Oh, rough. Okay, interesting choice of word. Hudson maintained that he doesn't regret his actions. Why would he? Men have to learn their hard lessons at our expense. They put us through the ringer so they can get, become better men. Fork that. I'm not his rehab. You're not his rehab. None of us should be their rehabs, but that's how they see us. Look at this. Honestly, if that didn't happen, I don't know what kind of person I would be. <laughs> That's a really scary statement. If you hadn't done all that to your wife and treated her like crap and lied and da 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 betrayed her right out of the gate before you even got out of the gate. God, how much worse would you be? It's almost like he's being like, you know, she should really be grateful to me for getting going going through it. Um, because if I hadn't, then, you know, maybe I would have her. Who knows? Who knows what kind of person I would be? <laughs> so, do I regret it? I mean, no. <laughs> I guess not. I regret causing pain. It doesn't sound like it. It doesn't sound like it because someone who really regretted causing that pain would never humiliate their wife. Like, none of us knew this! Now we all know! And now everyone's going to look at her differently for staying with you. Like, no one's really gonna look at him differently. They're gonna look at her differently because men's uh, bad behavior always is a reflection of her because that's how we put all on women. Whatever he does, she pays the price for. Why do you think women are like, hey, please don't do this, please don't do that. Men just humiliate us constantly by affiliation. So yeah, maybe we'd be like, wow, that was bad judgment. Um, but her, she looks desperate now. She looks like a woman with no self-esteem. Low self-worth, who lets you do no telling what to her. I never would have thought that before because I didn't know. I didn't know him, didn't know her, and now I know all this and I'm making this whole video. Why did you do this, bro? I mean, I didn't want to cause anyone pain, but... Although some choices might be bad, if you can s <laughs> sort of come out of it on the other end and, and learn from why they were bad, and how that affected you and everyone else around you. It sounds like you didn't, uh, you still don't understand how it affected everyone else around you. Because also, what about your kids? Now that, uh, now your kids, uh, you know, you've humiliated their mom. God, I can't with this man. 
then you're only growing and you're building your toolbox. Toolbox? Toolbox for what? Manipulating women? What is in this toolbox? Huh? Oliver, tell me. Gosh, I can't stand this man. I'm sorry, I woke you up, but I got excited. I mean, honestly, men, <laughs> men just use us as tools, ends to a means, right? So is your, te is your toolbox full of like other women that you have sacrificed because, anyway, God. He added, I mean, if everything was fucking rainbows and roses, then who are you? <laughs> I love that. Like, nothing is rainbows and roses. Everyone has cheated on their wife and lied about it and da-da-da-da-da, like me, right? <laughs> you know what I also find funny? I'd probably make a video at one point. I remember Climber Magazine. They once had a picture of a woman climbing, amazing climber, and on it, she was like basically climbing in a bra, you know, a sports bra. It was the most uh, hyper schmegulized photo of, a, of an athlete on the cover of Climber Magazine. And someone wrote into the editor being like, this seems really sexist. And the editors at Climber Magazine said, well, what would you rather her climb in? A burka? This is how men argue. Oh, you want to have rights to abortion? Why don't you just go stab a bunch of babies then? You know what I mean? Like th their arguments are full of crap. Like, I don't even bother because their arguments are like, if you don't want this, then you need the, then the other option is just a crazy extreme thing. Shut up, Oliver. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I'm getting so mad at Oliver and I just met him through his dumb oversharing. Don't give men podcasts. Oh, but you know what else he shared on? He also humiliated his mother not too long ago, which actually explains a lot about his treatment of his wife. He opened up about his childhood trauma with his mom. Now, just like a lot of men, he blamed his mother for what his dad did. Would you believe it? Definitely never seen this before, especially from men with single moms. I mean, he thinks that she's an amazing mother. So he was surprised to discover he had to work through some trauma stemming from his childhood with her. Talking about this Hoffman Institute and unpacking the patterns you know, trauma from your parents and step parents, blah, blah, blah. He expected to process his relationship with his two father figures. His father, uh, musician Bill Hudson, from whom Fa uh, Han uh, uh, filed divorce in 1980, and Kurt Russell, whom Hudson had dated, wait, who Goldie Hawn, not Hudson, <sighs> had, had dated since 1983. Okay, y'all need to fix that, unless she calls herself that. Anyway, I went in there thinking it was all going to be about my dad and then Kurt. My stepdad who raised me. But whatever connect that connection was, my dad who wasn't there. Bing, 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 bing. Those are the keywords. Dad who wasn't there. My mom was going to sort of be easy breezy because she was always the constant in my life. Yeah. Because it sounds like her ex, who was your father, did nothing to parent you and abandon you. So of course she's there. Of course she's the constant. What choice does she have? But... Everything flipped on its head. My mother was the one who came up the most. My mother was the one that I, um, that I had the most trauma about, interestingly enough, because she was my primary caregiver and I was with her all the time, so I felt unprotected at times. Now, given this is Hollywood and what we know about Hollywood, I don't doubt this. I actually wouldn't be surprised if this man went through a lot of trauma uh, because his mom was a working mom in Hollywood with predators literally everywhere and Sounds like she's a little boy crazy. Ever you say that in adult term. She would be working away or she would have a new boyfriends that I didn't really like. This is a, okay, y'all, this is why I say don't date while you have kids, young kids, unless, well, there's exceptions, but I almost never see it end up, turn out well for women or the children because these stepfathers end up being huge predators. Anyway, she'd be living her life. Oh, oh, that doesn't actually sound like a bad Role model. Mom has a life other than just you. Okay, I understand that she could have been a terrible mom. Absolutely. But I will say this, is that one of the best things my mom did was to show me that she also had a life outside of being a parent. I saw her as a, a human who had friends, who had hobbies and other things. And her whole world didn't totally revolve around me. Although she was absolutely a single mom who took care of everything. Just saying. She'd be living her life and she was an amazing mother. This was my own perception as a child who didn't have a dad. Key, that's key. 
and needed her to be there, you know? She just wasn't sometimes. Yeah, it's hard because your dad sucked. Maybe uh, it was challenging for her all along. Okay, so he's mad that his mom was not available all the time because she was working and had uh, more than one child, I forget how many, and no help from his father. Although Kurt Russell seems to have entered this <laughs> stage left at some point. I'm not sure how involved he was, but apparently he ended up being a very present figure in this man's life. But he's really mad at mom. <laughs> and then look at this. Hudson said that his limited interactions with his father were always positive. Oh, what a great dad. What a great dad. I can't believe on the rare occasion he saw you, you had fun with him. Sounds like he didn't traumatize you at all. Not by abandonment, neglect, literally acting like you don't exist, except for every once in a while. And those were so positive that this definitely is all mom's fault. <laughs> when I was with him, it was incredible. <laughs> Unlike mom, who made me like take baths, and brush my teeth, did all that stuff. I mean, you know, this, is, this is what I hate about when fathers are like, especially sons who had single mom, they saw their mom do everything. Do everything for them. Work so hard, sacrifice, da 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 da. And then they rarely see their dad, but when they see their dad, it's fun stuff. Fun stuff. And so somehow they think their dad was a good man and they blame her for making him go away. Definitely, she's probably a nag, like all women. And this is the thing, moms complain about this all the time is like when, when dads just do the fun stuff. Moms don't get credit for all the love that they put into it. They just are like the ones who are just like, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. God, I'm so annoyed by it. Oliver, I don't like you. Why did you make me not like you with all this crap? Why did you have to open your mouth? He paid attention to me. We played football. We played basketball. We were on the beach. He taught me how to fish. Wow, that sounds so great. What a great dad. Wow. It sounds more like an uncle than a dad. But he gets dad credit for doing nothing. He was so present. Oh my God, uh, he was so present, but he was just never there. <laughs> like what? Do you hear yourself saying these words? Oh my God. <laughs> but mom caused him trauma, okay. Um, you, Goldie, why did you take him fishing and the football and basketball and to the beach more? Oh right, you're working and literally feeding this kid and making sure he didn't die. Then he talks about how this whole thing, they don't forgive his parents, blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, you feel, you, you process, it's unbelievable. Then you realize that they're only repeating the thing that they went through with their parent. The forgiveness of my father was huge because his dad left him when he was five years old in the middle of the night. And so, you know what? My dad was better than his dad. So my dad was a good dad. And I only cheated on my wife right before we got married a whole lot and then humiliated her day. But because I didn't leave my kids when, uh, I, when they were five and I wasn't as bad as my dad, I'm a good man with no malice. Do you see how these men do? This is why all men benefit from the violence of men, the mediocrity of men, the weaponizing competence of men, because the lower the bar is, the, the better these dudes look for doing awful jobs at being fathers and husbands. And this is the perfect example of that. This is how they think. As long as I didn't fill in the blank, I'm better than my dad, therefore I'm good. Come on. Did you ask about her mom and dad? Huh? What about her mom and dad? Did you even care? Do you give women that kind of grace? I doubt it. Because look at this. Later on, he had to clear this one up. He got in trouble with mom. Ooh, no, no, no. There was no trauma. Oopsie. But look at this. There was no trauma whatsoever <laughs> for my mom and the way she raised me. I promise. And when he made those comments, it's because he was speaking from his child self. Okay? I didn't mean it. My kid was talking. Now, as someone who believes in IFS and parts, I actually do understand when people are talking from those parts. But like, bro. You're famous. You're talking about your family and your wife and your mom. Uh, he's just like not thoughtful. But look at this. He's used to women cleaning up for him. He finished trying to, you know, clean up his own thing before a woman came in and cleaned it up for him. Without her again, I'd be nothing. Nothing. It's more about sort of my child feelings in the moment rather than me and how I feel about mom as a parent. Okay? Y'all just don't understand. But look at this. 
Kate chimed in, that's his sister, Kate Hudson, in claiming her brother slipped up because he was unsup unsupervised while taping. This right here makes me think uh, little Oliver here is a king baby in his nuclear family with his wife. And he's the little prince baby in his home. Because look at this. Uh, why do you need a handler, Oliver? I mean, I, I can see why. But this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. You, you have to be supervised by your sister before you can talk? You're 47! Or he was, I think, when this happened. I guess, look, she said, you used such clickbait words. I'm like, I can't leave my brother alone for a second. I'm sure a lot of women can relate to that. Or you insert the word husband or father or whatever. But I hate this. Why can't women just be? Why do we have to babysit these dudes in literally everything? Even babysit your brother. You got in a little bit of, uh, of heat from mom about your trauma comment because it became a clickbait headline versus the context of what you were saying. Because remember, he said he had almost the most trauma from his mother, even though Han was his primary caregiver. And he was with her all the time. And then he's talking about what a great dad he was because he was so present but never there. <laughs> I wish these men could just like record what they say and actually listen to what they say. It doesn't have to take like, like journalists to be like, look what he said and be like, whoa, what? Like, did you even listen to your own podcast, bro? He's all like, this is my own perception as a child who didn't have a dad. Oh, you mean the dad that was so present? <laughs> and needed her to be there and, and she just wasn't sometimes and she came out far more than, than even my dad who wasn't there. Like, <laughs> Again, he talked about all these like repeating patterns that you went through with your parents. Look at this. The forgiveness of my thought, my father was huge because his dad left him when he was five, five years old in the middle of the night, gone. My dad didn't do that exactly, but like essentially he bailed. <laughs> okay, he's starting to connect the dots. <laughs> I just, I can't, I'm tired of Oliver. I don't want to talk about you anymore, Oliver. And I also don't want to know anything else about you. Please stop talking about your family especially the women in your life. You are literally humiliating them and they will pay the price for everything you say. So when I say all the time that men don't really respect uh, women who sacrifice for them or endure things for them, this is what I'm talking about. You, you will never convince me that man's not gonna cheat again. If he hasn't already, he will cheat again because he is clearly not sorry. And as long as he doesn't bail on all his kids at five in the morning, and he does a little bit more than football, beach, and fishing like his dad. He's a good man. And that is why men are so stuck. They are playing the bare minimum game. <clears throat> if I just do this much more, instead of actually addressing. The, it sounds like he's addressing any of his trauma, although he's blaming his mom. And I'm not saying that his mom wasn't a part of it. Because she may be very, she may be an enmeshed Toxic boy mom who enables this prince because, I mean, his sister is, seems like his handler, so who knows? I'm not saying that, 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 that she is not a part of this too. But any man that tests you like that and sees how much you can endure, to see, they're testing you to see how much you respect yourself and what you'll put up with. And you, I mean, these had three kids, right? Could have died three times. She was, I think, Miss, Miss America or Miss USA or one of those. Was an actress, but I don't see her doing anything. Maybe a little busy because she's raising his children. But he had nothing better to do than go in a podcast and humiliate her. Long after, like um, like 18 years after he did it, he's like, oh, by the way, did y'all know I cheated? <laughs> and I got away with it. But I'm such a good man, I told her. That's how good I am. Everyone celebrate. Oh my God, I can't with these men. Listen, watch these examples. Men think just like him. They just don't have as much money. They're not Nepo babies, but they, they have just as much entitlement. Whether or not they have resources, the entitlement is there until they actually unpack that entitlement that patriarchy teaches them. Entitlement is one of the biggest things I look for when I was dating. As soon as I, no, no. I don't want to, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a teacher. I mean, I am, but I'm done teaching men because they don't pay me anyway. <laughs> and they're terrible students. Like, comment, set on the notifications, uh, and all those things, share, that really helped me grow my page. Thank you for being here. And let me know if you want that overboard uh, movie breakdown because uh, I'm horrified at the idea of going back and rewatching it, but I'm sure I'll have a lot to say. Thank you, thank you.